metal that it was made out of deteriorated in value. What does that mean? Each kingdom that will come from the time of Babylon straight down to now will be a weaker kingdom morally. There will be moral depravity. They won't just be weak in military might, but there will be a morality that will be depraved in the kingdoms as they will come because there is a war in heaven between Lucifer and Michael, and Lucifer was sent down to deceive the whole world. What does this deception? Don't have faith in God and disobey his commandments. When you don't have faith in God and disobey his commandments, it leads to spiritual degeneracy and moral depravity. So the question we started with is, what's going on? It was the question that the king woke up with on the tip of his lips. What's going on? Trying to answer his dream. And Daniel answers the question exactly what's going on. Let us go further. He made you the ruler of all the inhabited world and has put even the wild animals and birds under your control. Next verse. You are the head of those, but after your kingdom comes to an end. Now that's where the kingdom, the king went crazy. Well, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> My kingdom come to an end. There's nobody that really thinks that their stuff is going to come to an end. Every man as he comes blossoms in his shoes with his bold chest pumping up and his body steps as they were. He never thinks that that kingdom is going to come to an end. But you just go down 60 years to live. That chest, that kingdom has come to an end. Somebody ought to say amen. After that kingdom will come to an end, a kingdom inferior to yours will rise and take your place. After that kingdom has fallen, yet a third kingdom represented by bronze will rise to rule the world. We know the history that is written down by many great historians that there was a kingdom called Babylon, and there was a subsequent kingdom called Medes and Persia, and there was a subsequent kingdom called Greece. Secular historians have given veracity to this, that this Bible story is true. Some may argue that maybe this was written after that. No, we have archaeologists that have gone and proven that Daniel's story was written before any of the subsequent kingdoms took place. What does this mean? That the Bible can be trusted as the sure word of God and that God does answer secrets and interprets dreams. Somebody ought to say amen. Following that kingdom, there will be a fourth one as strong as iron. That represents Rome. We know that Rome was known for metallurgy. It was the kingdom where which iron was really perfected, and that's how they conquered the entire world. They made weapons of iron. They made boats of iron. They wore iron. It was called the Iron Kingdom. Well, that kingdom will smash and crush all previous empires. Following that kingdom, there will be a fourth one, as strong as iron. That kingdom will smash and crush all previous empires, just as iron smashes and crushes everything it strikes. That was Rome. And then finally, the feet and toes that you saw, shaped like a man, combination of iron and baked clay, showing that this kingdom will be divided. Never again after Rome will one nation control the entire planet. All right. And we know that after Rome came the nations of Europe. 400 years of control by European Western expansion. We've seen the nations of England control the Latin Caribbean and Africa. We've seen Portugal control portions of Africa. We've seen Spain control the Latin Americas. Eventually, you will begin to see that the European nations that control the world right now are the divided kingdoms that are spoken of right here in Daniel chapter 2. We are grappling right now after 400 years of what we call racism and white supremacy and didn't realize that Daniel predicted that this would be the last kingdom on the planet. There is no country in the planet that's not been touched by European expansion. And so we understand now why the Trayvon Martin case makes sense. Because we're living in a culture and a context that is still controlled by the 400 years of European domination and we have not come to the next kingdom. Prophecy is sure. And so now that you're getting your headache, you begin to realize that you're just like Daniel. Most of us are just simply like those same people that were controlled in Babylon, like Daniel was controlled. We are controlled by the dominant forces that we cannot have any influence over. But I know somebody yes, that despite where you come from, what you look like, and how much money you have, you still have access to somebody that's greater than the kingdoms of the world today. Rich, poor, black, white, you can still have direct access to the king of kings. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Daniel goes on beyond that. The mixture of iron 
play also should have these kingdoms would try to strengthen themselves by forming alliances. The Queen of England marrying the Queen of France, and the Queen of Portugal trying to marry the Queen of Spain, forming alliances with each other through intermarriage, but they will not hold together just as iron and clay do not mix. Even today, the European Union is a fragile union. No matter how they try to pull it together, it's still just divided nations of Europe. The next verse. During the reigns of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. Amen. Friends, what's going on? We are in the throes of the last kingdom of Earth's history. What's going on? Children are disobedient. Men are more lovers of themselves than lovers of God. What's going on? Sickness is rampant throughout the world. The economy cannot be stabilized. What is going on? We are right now preparing for that final kingdom that Daniel spoke of to come. The kingdom of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed or conquered. Somebody ought to say amen if you're today. It will crush all these kingdoms into nothingness, and it will stand forever. Amen. We are not playing <coughs> games. We are not just coming for a miracle just to get paid. We need a miracle so that we can make it into that final kingdom and make sure that we will not be crushed by that kingdom, but that kingdom we shall inhabit. Amen. But friends, turn with me, if you will, to the Bible. You will look at Ephesians chapter 6. What book did I say? Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians is a right turn after Galatians. Yeah. Somebody said, but where is Galatians? <laughs> Well, Galatians is a left turn before Ephesians and a right turn after 2 Corinthians. Somebody say amen. I know it's been a long time since you've been turning pages, but we're going to use the Bible throughout this series. Is that okay? Because I think the Bible has the answer to what's going on. Well, it says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12. All together. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, you must stand. What's going on? We have a world that now is under spiritual anarchy. The team of the devil is now mounted up. After having been kicked out of heaven and kicked down to earth, the king of the earth is now, the prince of this earth now is Jesus, who is claiming his territory because the Bible says that he came down and he took back over the dominion of this world. But the devil is angry. Because he doesn't want any of us to know the secret and the miracle. This next three weeks, we're going to discuss the miracle that can be yours so that you can be in the kingdom of Jesus and begin to see things popping off in your life like you've never seen before. Amen. Daniel, Amen. sitting there, poor, slave, yet he had a miracle. Late one night, a knock came on his door, and he became the prime minister of entire Babylon. You know, there's a secret, and there's a miracle for you. There's a secret to get access to power, and there's a miracle that's waiting to happen. But if you don't know the secret, 
and to all to experience the miracle, you're going to be continuously left suffering, fighting the wrong fights in the wrong battle. All right, all right. You're going to be getting involved with political warfare. No answer. You're going to try to educate yourself. No answer. You've tried to get the money. No answer. You've tried to get power. No answer. You've tried sex. No answer. You need to experience a miracle. Yes. Yes. But you need to know the secret. My friend, let me let you know, it's not simply a secret and a miracle. There is a time that this will all wind up. And the final kingdom will be established, and that is the kingdom of God. Put on the full armor of God, for you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. What's going on? A spiritual battle between good and evil that is about right. to come to a screeching halt, yeah. yeah. and you need to be in the right position, Hallelujah. the right place, at the right time, yeah. with the right person, and his name is Jesus. Bow your heads and close your eyes. Give God some praise to hear today. <laughs> to the piano. There's somebody here today that wants to know more about what's going on. But not just know it, because there are some increasing in knowledge, but they don't get to any fulfillment of their knowledge. You want to make a move, and a God move, so that you can be on the right side at the end of this great battle. That's about an eyes closed. If you're that person, says, I want to make sure that I get my miracle, and I need to know the secret, I just want you to take a stand. You just want to make sure that you get your miracle. You're going to come to discover the secret. Just, take a, just raise your hand where you are. I want to know the secret. I want to have a miracle. Amen. 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 If you raise your hand, stand. If you haven't, please remain seated. You raise your hand, just stand. But I want to pray specifically for you. Our God and our Father, today, we want the miracles to start pouring out. Lord, you said you wish above all things that we prosper and be in good health. We want health, we want prosperity, even as our soul prospers. Daniel received good health because he was obedient, but he also received prosperity as a miracle. We want prosperity, we want health, but we want most of all, Lord, our souls to prosper, that we may be saved in that kingdom. Those who have stood today, there is something on their mind. There's a person who has a health issue and they stood because they need a miracle. There's somebody who has a family member, they stood because that person needs a miracle. There's somebody here that's in a relationship that's not working, they need a miracle. There's a marriage that's on the fragile borders of being busted up, they need a miracle. There's a child that's still running the street outside of the ark of safety, they need a miracle. There's somebody whose finances have just about been wiped out. They need a miracle. God, you are not just a God that wants us to get to heaven. You want heaven to get into us. And because heaven comes into us, it attracts the blessings that are temporal as well as spiritual. Lord, we need a miracle. We want to thank you for what you have done and are about to do. They want to claim these promises that you've given us. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, let everyone say amen. Put your hands together and give God